Hey guys, today I'm going to be making a video covering the topic of chess. Just going to make an AI to tackle it. Uh, it's been going pretty popular recently. A uh, bit of a downward trend, but when I started making this video, it was very popular. So uh, let's just go with that. Um, I'm making this video because I've recently seen the videos by CodeBullet and Sebastian Leek and what they've done. Uh, they've made great videos discussing the topic. However, Sebastian Leagues was just too good. Like, it absolutely demolished me. And uh, I've got no clue how to make a anything that good. And it doesn't have that crappy put-together feel that I love. Uh, and then Code Bullets is just too much garbage. Like, it doesn't castle, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, so I'm going to try and make something in between that. Uh, just to have something hacked together that can at least castle. Uh, because that's something a chess piece should be able to do. Um, so that's my goal. Uh, so to start off, we're going to need to represent the board. There's a couple of options for this. Uh, in Sebastian League's video, he did uh, numbers on a 64-bit array with each of the numbers representing a piece and each piece in each uh, item in the array being a square. Uh, this is great for efficiency, however it's difficult to code, uh, where CodeBullet went for doing objects. So um, each piece was an object on an 8x8 array. Uh, so which one of those do you think I'll do? Uh, neither. Um, I went for a method that is both slow and hard to code. Uh, so I represent pieces by using uh, a ladder, so capital P for a white pawn, lowercase p for a lowercase for a black pawn, sorry, um, and a lowercase for all black pieces, so like a lowercase k would be a king, capital case, uppercase k would be a white king. Um, so the AI works like that. Uh, so let's quickly build that in and let's make it take in a fen string. A fen string is just an easy way to represent pieces on the board um, and see if we can get some pieces on the board. We've finally got it represented. Uh, so here um, I've got the promotions here. So all of these, uh, these um, here are the pieces it can promote to. And then here are all the pieces on the board. Um, if I inspect here, uh, you can see I've just got it represented as a div. And each piece is just the Unicode piece because that's a lot easier than having proper images. Um, so here you can look at the board and the board, as you can see, I've represented as a string. So here it's just a string uh, with null basically everywhere in the middle because there's no pieces in the middle. Um, and here we can move pieces. Uh, the gray border is just showing you that that is a valid move. I haven't done programming to check if it's a valid move yet. I'm going to do that next. So here, the pawn, you can move that forward. They can move their pawn. We can go here. Um, but one important thing is I've made turns work. So white can't play twice. Uh, that was easy enough to do. Uh, so let's say here, um, the king can move into check and I can just take the king. So that's bad. I'll work on that next. Uh, and also some special rules like on and castling. I'll get those worked out. So I'll come back once those have been worked out, but I've got the board worked out and getting the pieces on the board. We're doing it now. Uh, we've got the pieces worked out, so now they move properly. So the pawn moves, the other pawn moves, the horse moves properly, the king uh, moves properly. Um, we've got all the pieces moving properly, so the castle can't do anything. Horse moves there. Um, if we go here and play an Italian, they can go here. Um, I do have some problems though. So here if I move uh, this pawn up, and then this pawn up, and then this pawn there. Sorry, I'll oh, do it on this side that pawn, uh, then a random move, and then here, and then here, uh, en passant is a bit weird. Um, I'm really regretting doing a single 64 um, item array, where what I should have done is an array of 8x8, because now I've got problems with the black pieces, they en passant the other way um, to the white pieces, so that, that's wrong. So like if I move now, it en passant's the wrong way. Um, and also on the edge, you've got this weird wraparound effect. If I reset the game, I go here, there, 
I can en passant around it because it wraps around, um, w which is super weird and I'll need to fix. Um, and I also don't have check working yet, so I'll work on those two um, next. 2,000 years later. I finally worked out checks um, and captures um, and the opposite wraparound thing. So now if I go there and they go there, I can't opposite around. Um, that was such a headache to get working. Why, what I ended up having to do was calculate the uh, file that it's on uh, by doing um, so the squares go uh, 0 here, 1 here, 2 there, 3 there, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then it wraps around to 8. So I had to do the square mod 8 plus 1 is the uh, file, and I had to check that it wasn't on, uh, the, the file was greater than 0 um, to do an opposite um, or a capture along the side, um, which was really annoying to work out. I, I definitely should have done a 2D array. Um, but now that that's working, we've got all the pieces. Uh, check is working proper, properly. Uh, so if I somehow get the king in check, uh, let's say here, here, I can't move the king into check, um, and then let's say I move there, now uh, let's say this pawn can't move because the king is in check, uh, the queen can't move, um, and the only option is to move the king. Uh, let's find another example, so if I go check here, the king can move, or the queen can take, so that took a while to work out, although it wasn't that bad, uh, how I ended up doing that was after each move, what I do is I do the move and then check if the king's in check, uh, which is quite slow and inefficient, but by this point in the project, I just really couldn't be bothered uh, to do it properly. Um, so beyond that, it is working great. I've got castling working. So here, if they take, I can move here, king moves back. I've got castling, so the king and the uh, rook swap, um, which is working great. And I also um, changed the uh, font for the chess pieces, uh, just to make them look a bit nicer, because the old ones were so ugly. So that's been a big improvement. Uh, next, I'll try and add the minimax algorithm. Uh, I'm going to not go into too much depth here. If you actually want to know what the minimax algorithm is and how to implement it, uh, I'd strongly recommend a video from Sebastian Lag, uh, which I will uh, pin now. Um, but I'll give you a quick overview. Uh, so te to test out the algorithm, I built this simple tic-tac-toe again. So um, I did some practice and figured out how it would work. Uh, so how it works is I'll it will think what are all the moves it can do and then think of all my responses to it, and then all of its responses to that, until it gets to a depth which it knows, and then it picks the best options every time to see what's the best possible outcome it can get. So that sounded very complicated, but it's actually not too bad. So here, it goes in the corner, which is the only winning move. So then I'll go here, uh, I'll block it, uh, I'll block it here, and I'll go there. Now tic-tac-toe is a very simple game. Uh, you've got, um, uh, I think, nine factorial moves that it can do, roughly, because on the first turn you've got nine moves, then you've got eight, uh, which actually isn't that big. Um, there's only, like, uh, I'm not sure what 9 factorial is. Uh, it's a big number, it's around a thousand. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, uh, chess is a lot harder. Like, after 10 moves, you've got trillions and trillions of moves. Um, so we'll have to optimize it further, but let's just go through an example. So here, it generates um, all the moves that it can do, here. And that's at a depth of 1. And then it generates all the opponent's moves in response to that. And then all the moves it can do, and then all the opponent's responses to that. Um, and don't worry about how we get these values at the end. Uh, I'll talk about that later. But um, you think here, plus um, infinity could be like checkmate for white. And then minus infinity would be checkmate for black. So black would be trying to get the lowest possible score, and white would be trying to get the highest possible score. So imagine min being the black player, the black player and max being the white player. So here, uh, it's trying to minimize it. So here, uh, what is the black player going to pick out of 10 and plus infinity? It's going to pick 10 because that's a low number. Uh, here I'd pick 5, here I'd pick negative 10, uh, here I'd pick 5, negative infinity, and 7. So here, 2, with the, at a depth of 2, which is uh, the white player because it's maximizing, it's going to pick the higher number. So 10, uh, uh, and 5 here, and it's got no choice for the other two. Then here we're back to black, so it's minimizing. And here we're at white, so we're maximizing, so we get 7. Um, so that's how it works. It's pretty simple to implement in code. Um, so once I do that, I'll have it working, and we'll see how we can go from there. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to talk about how we um, actually evaluate those positions at the end of the board. Uh, so what we're going to use are these piece values. Um, so we're going to add up the sum of white's pieces. So let's say white had a queen and a rook. 
So we'd add that up to 14, and then we'd subtract black's pieces. So we'd do 14, let's say black had a queen and a bishop, so we'd say uh, black has uh, 12 points of material, 14 minus 12 is 2, so we'd say white is winning by 2, so we'd have an evaluation of 2 on the board. Um, this works pretty well. Uh, in combination with stalemates being 0, and checkmates being um, infinity for whoever won, so plus infinity for white, negative infinity for black, uh, we can get a pretty good evaluation. However, if you look at um, CodeBullets AI, which uses this as its evaluation function, if you do moves, um, the AI does pretty random moves, like you should be going for the center and developing pieces, but it just lets me get all over the center and um, go right in the center and kind of does nothing. Uh, like here, I can get as much development as I want and it just does nothing to stop me. Um, so we'll definitely need to improve that. Um, so here I, I should be able to castle, but he, he didn't program that in. Um, and I've just got a great position here. And like, okay, well I'm blundering because I'm trash, but it doesn't have much development. So to improve that, um, we have these um, tables for uh, where the pieces should be. So here, this is one for the pawn, and it's saying that pawns in the center of the board, uh, these center four squares is really good. Where a pawn in front of your king and queen and your bishops won't be allowing it to get out, which is bad. And then these pawns at the back um, are really good because they'll have a chance of queening. Um, so we have those for each of the uh, pieces. So a knight should be in the center, as you see here. A bishop should be kind of in the center, but it's less necessary. And as long as it's not on the edge, it's pretty good. Um, so here, a fian kettered bishop is pretty good. It's worth five points. Um, here, rooks, they say sliding a rook into your back rank is really good, so it does that. A queen should be centralized, but however, not so much. And then a king, we actually need two tables, one for the middle of the game, because the king needs to stay safe, and then one for the end of the game, when you activate the king in the end. Um, and once we've implemented those, even if we're only searching to a depth of, let's say, three, we can get some really good positional play going, uh, which is extremely good for beating those um, lawyer to mid-elo people um, that don't have great positional play. Um, in addition to this, I'm going to make it so um, the AI tries to simplify. So that means uh, if there's fewer pieces on the board, uh, I'll make that make it winning even more. So that way, if, um, let's say, you're up by a queen, you want to trade rocks or trade pieces because that way you're winning by even more. So I've also implemented that. Um, so after those, we should be pretty good and it should be able to solve many things even at a depth of like five. Um, so I'll, I'll try and implement those now. And uh, now we can play against the AI. So I'm playing as white here. Um, I I've also made some additional t changes, uh, but they're just small things. Uh, so here they are playing a um, Sicilian defense. So I'm going to play a closed Sicilian. Um, and then I am going to move that out and then move that there. Um, it immediately moved on those first couple moves because I've programmed in some book moves. Um, and now it's going to have to think for itself. And there you can see that it thinks I'm winning by about a pawn. Um, however, it's kind of inaccurate. Uh, like Stockfish would only say I'm winning by a, a slight amount. Uh, this bar here, uh, this slider, is how long an AI, how long the AI takes. So if I slide it down here, the AI will move almost immediately. Uh, so here it takes, there will take, I'll take there. Um, I will slide back here. Uh, it trades queens, I'll go there. I will castle, and it's already found a winning position here. It says it's up by two. Uh, so let's move there. It, it's just got such good positional play that it's hard to beat. Um, I'll have to slide back in here. Um, and I'm already looking fairly bad. Let's go there, see what it thinks. Oh, so it castled now. Um, uh, I'll try and get my rook into the game, try and move it to the center. So I'll move that over there, and then I'll slide my rook in here. Try and, oh, damn it, I, I left that hanging. Okay, let's go there, try and kick it out. We can take. Now if we go, um, oh, this is tough. Uh, there, we've kind of got to take, otherwise it's looking very good. Um, let's go there. Oh, I, I'm missing hanging pieces, um, and it's just such a good AI. Um, so, I'll play till checkmate, but it's looking pretty good. Um, kind of just got no options here. Um, maybe try and move pawn up. Lost. Ah, so there. Let's move there, try and take it. Um, oh, damn it. So, when check, let's go up there. Um, let's go there. Uh, there. I've got that move there. And here, we've only got two moves. Very close to checkmate. Um, it's just a matter of time now. 
just keep playing. So now it's saying mate in four. So uh, I've lost because it's going to promote. Uh, and there, that's game. Uh, so it's a very good AI. Um, okay, here I've got a couple of online games uh, that it's played. I'll, I'll walk you through the first one, then the second one I'll, I'll just talk over afterwards. So here it started with um, E4, played a Sicilian, then it did a Wayward Queen attack, which uh, Stockfish doesn't like, but um, it turned out pretty well in this game. And this was actually the first game that it played, which is just insane to think it won in five moves on it. Um, so they played that. Um, it, it says it's excellent, but it was a bit of an inaccuracy because uh, it does nothing to deal with uh, my threat here. Um, so let's see what it does. Uh, so it moves in uh, the bishop there. So we are doing a checkmate threat um, here. So to deal with that, they're going to have to um, maybe move a pawn there or move a pawn there to try and cut off the connection. Um, but what do they do? They do... Um, g6. Now that's um, a blunder. So it looks like it just stops my attack there. Uh, but um, my AI found the incredible move, uh, queen to d5, um, which is um, really good. So once it's done that, it gets the exclamation mark, that great move. Um, it's threatening mate again uh, with the battery, with the um, bishop. But what it's also doing is it's threatening to take um, the castle there. Um, now my opponent here, uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, um, saw the check, saw the threat here to the castle, but missed the checkmate threat, so they played c6, knight c6, which is a blunder, and it allows me to do checkmate, and Stockford, my AI, quickly found it, um, and won the game in just five moves, um, in a very obscure opening, it was managed to get, it managed to get checkmate super quickly, uh, which is just insane. Um, so while you're watching this second game, I'm going to talk about some of those uh, changes that I made um, that I didn't tell you about. Uh, so the first one's Alpha Beta Proting, uh, which is a fancy name for just only doing the moves that aren't terrible. So like if you're going to lose your queen immediately uh, doing a move, you don't need to check whether it's a good move, you, you kind of know it's trash. Um, so that's alpha beta pruning. Uh, it, it does it in a smarter way, but I can't be bothered explaining it. Um, then we've also got evaluating captures. So a lot of those end evaluation pe um, moves, they're quite bad because they've got hanging pieces everywhere um, at the end of the evaluation. So I've got it so it evaluates captures after the standard evaluation to an infinite depth, which means it's evaluating about five times more positions on each depth. And it can only get to, let's say half, it can only get to, let's say, one depth higher. So if it could get to four previously, maybe it could only get to three now. Um, but that's quite good. I also did um, a transposition table, which is checking, has this position come up before in the game and have I evaluated it? And if you have, then it just looks it up and doesn't do it again because that's wasted time computing. And that takes the amount of positions I need to check down like 10 times. Like it's insane. You can get to your depth maybe two or three times as deep. Uh, then finally, the last change was iterative deepening. So that was to do with the time controls. Uh, and essentially it just means um, it starts a depth of one search, then a depth of two search, then a depth of three search. And then it just, um, if the time limit's been reached, it just returns the previous search, um, which means it can do any time constraints pretty well. Uh, so those were the quick changes I made. Um, they're all pretty good. Um, so it worked well. Um, any questions, leave them in the comments. But now going back to this game, it just did insane. Look at that 1500 rating and that insane opening and middle game accuracy. Um, it's just such a good AI and is very competent um, in these mid-level games. Um, I'd estimate it to be around 15 to maybe 2000, depending on the time controls. Um, but sometimes it loses to like a 1200 for some reason. Like one of my friends is a 1200 and it lost to him. Uh, for one of the games, but then it won a couple others. So it could be anywhere in that range, I I'm not particularly sure. But play against it, have fun, and um, please leave a like and comment on this video. I uh, really appreciate that.